So, uh, hi, I don't have a title for this, but I felt like I should put something on the screen rather than just talking with no visual aid. So, I am Brian Kress, and that's currently the title of my presentation. Um, <laughs> I should, can you guys hear me driving this, this on? Does it do anything of benefit? No. It might be good for the recording. Does it help with um, the recording? Yep. Cool. Okay. Oh, that's annoying. Did we turn the volume down or something? Or no, it's my testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two. Cool. I'm going to leave that low. This is really annoying. I hate hearing myself talk. Okay. So, um, I'm Brian Krause. Uh, this is kind of a technical side of things. It's... Sorry. So, um, you can hit me Twitter, B. Krause, LinkedIn, B. Krause. Brian Krause's Gmail, fairly straightforward. Um, basically, so this talk is kind of more of a technical side of things. Uh, we've never really had a chance to get into code, um, and I was really looking forward to the chance to do that. Um, quick scramble before I start. Who here has, who here knows PHP? For various definition, knows. Good, all of you, you, you read the email. Um, who here has written or modified a WordPress plugin's code before? Cool, uh, a good number of you. That's awesome. So, uh, before we can start, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm Ryan. This was the first, uh, WordPress holds a lot of meaning to me, the WordPress meetup here, because this was the first networking event I ever came to when I moved to Boston. Um, I graduated Carnegie Mellon, I moved here about a year ago. Um, I am leaving here a week from Thursday to go start a company in California. So, uh, this will be also my last Boston meetup. So, it's very exciting. If you want to hear more about that, talk to me afterwards. If you have any exposure to usability studies or anything like that, have you ever run a usability study, please talk to me afterwards. That's my shameless plug uh, to help myself and personal gain. That's my cost of presenting here. Um, cool, so let's dive right into it. So basically, I'm going to go into six examples here um, that kind of go into the, the deep down nitty gritty of WordPress plugins. Um, there's a lot of documentation on WordPress plugins. There's ways things on how to get started, how to write WordPress plugins, all that cool stuff. But in, I was I was trying to figure out testing one two. Oh, this is the remote mic, not the podium mic. Testing one two. Yes, I don't have to hear myself talking. It's wonderful. Cool. So now I can talk about. Um, so there are six examples we're going to go into here um, on how to do weird things with WordPress plugins. Um, Basically, the general gist here, there's some good documentation on uh, the WordPress.org codex. Um, I use Google. Am I still too loud? I'm not using my anymore. No. Oh, well, they'll do it. So cool. Um, so yeah, so there's good documentation on how to do things. They have, they talk about the actions and stuff like that. And the the one thing that's, the one thing they don't go into is, well, everything. They give you the generic, like what you want to do with the WordPress plugin. Um, they talk about how you would want to, you know, make a generic page and do things like that. And then there's like bits and pieces of how to add a new page, how to do some database updates, but it's not really cohesive and it's missing a lot of custom things. And I, I found the habit when, when someone comes to me for, for custom consulting work, they're not looking for something you could find, you know, the, the SEO plugin because they've already installed. They're looking for something weird and custom. So I, I got a lot of exposure to uh, all of these weird deep down things. And that's kind of the, the basis of this talk. Um, by the way, it's, it's not a presentation, it's a conversation. Please interrupt me, ask me questions. I'm going to be digging through code. It's, it's not meant to be polished and a spiel. It's meant for people to be talking back. Um, so, uh, like I said, you know, you, if you've never developed a plugin before, go on the Codex, look at things. Um, this is just things that you, the Codex either very, very lightly touches on or has no documentation on. The way I found these is literally just digging through the WordPress code. Uh, Rep is your friend. Um, if you want to find out how to do something, figure out where it's done, see if there's a hook, and tie into the hook. That is going to keep happening unless I pull my charger out. So I'm going to keep rambling while I pull my charger out and plug it in, because I'm very obviously not going to there. Anyway, so like I said, dig down. You'll be able to find how to do things. I have a power cord, and this is no longer a problem. I just had like two or three sprites, so bear with me in my capacity. Um, so, item one, activating plugins. So, WordPress, uh, one of the cool things about WordPress is it's really meant for people who don't, you know, don't necessarily know what they're doing. If they know what they're doing, it's awesome, but if they don't, you know, it's really good about it. So, um, the, the standard 
plug-in architecture that you would get in PHP, or most things is you know you you load some WordPress code, and then you see what plugins there are, and then you load all the plugins, and then you load some more WordPress code, and then that's that's your page load basically. Um, the the problem is what if your what if your plugin has has a problem? It has uh, basically a syntax error is is what I'm referring to. Um, because here in in PHP, it would say arg angry syntax error, and then most people would get really confused and throw their hands up and go move to removable type or something like that. So um, WordPress gets around this with a really cool thing. So they assume you're not going to be modifying your plugin code once it's activated, but once you go to activate a plugin, it it sends this really weird. I don't want to get too deep into the, the HTTP structure and, and syntax, but basically they will. When you click that install button, it will um, send a redirect with an error flag in the header, and then it will load the WordPress plugin code. Um, and if the plugin fails and throws an error, you already sent this redirect, so the browser is prepared to do the redirect, so you can basically know that there is an error. Um, however, if this doesn't cause some horrible ungodly error, you can then activate the plugin and you can override the redirect with a new redirect saying, well, this worked fine. This is really cool. Um, when I first read through this, I, I had a moment of, of appreciation for the, the thought that went into this. Um, but one of the weird things about plugins is they don't really give any mechanism to give feedback to the user um, when on installation. There's, there's a hook, and I'm actually going to dig into code now. Um, there's a hook that will let you that will let you do things when the plugin is activated. Is that big enough for everyone? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to open. So basically, so there's there's there are ways to kind of hack around this that I'm going to show you. If you're ever writing a plugin for public release and you want to do something, let's say to the effect of um, saying uh, don't saying don't activate this plugin for certain reasons or throw an error to the user. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So WP, I wrote this kind of test plugin here, and I'll throw this online at some point. Um, called Boston WP. Cool. So here, basic, very boring plugin um, with some examples. So my first example is is basically what I was talking about. So WordPress has this thing that you register an activation hook. Um, excuse me. And so you'll know you'll know the call that on which WordPress is being activated. Um, at this point in the slideshow, you would be basically right here. So what you can do, and this is, is a hack, but it works, is if something fails, let's say you know a file doesn't exist or there aren't the permissions that you're looking for or there's something like that, what you can do is you can just little save a little note for yourself and then you can manually throw an error. PHP has this function that most people don't know about called trigger error um, that will literally throw whatever error you want and you want to throw a fatal error, meaning everything stops and you let the, the standard flow of something horrible happening uh, take effect the way WordPress would account for it. So it's called a user error as opposed to a regular error because you can't actually throw those. Um, so then uh, WordPress has this other thing that they do. Well, let me actually go and show you. Uh, this is just WordPress 3.0, uh, new install, nothing special about it. Uh, surprisingly similar to 2.9 in the way things work. So let's do this here. So we have this activation hook. And what WordPress will do, what WordPress will do is if it fails, it'll load an iframe in here. And this is actually an iframe that you can't see with a page that includes the, the error, that, that which with the page that basically does the same thing again so that it can actually catch the text of the error. Um, so basically what that lets you do is if you if you know the parameters that it's loading under, um, which is just an error scrape, quite literally, and just check the file so no one can abuse it um, because that is open to abuse, you can you can basically hack around it so that you can uh, display an error message to the user. Um, so I kind of wrote like this register activation hook is just so people can see it, but through your normal ins installation process, if you want to stop and just throw up your hands to the user, this is really, as far as I can tell, the only way to stop and say, well, this doesn't work. Um, go and do something else and message the user. Whether it's, you know, if it's an image plugin, maybe you need to 
set the permissions on a folder, and you don't want to get in this inconsistent state where the plugin's activated, but you don't want it to run. Um, so it's kind of a cool little thing. Uh, like I said, a little hack. Uh, again, I saw this by digging through the plugin installation code, just tracing through the files and things like that. Um, does anyone have any questions about that example? So if you wanted to say something other than that generic that error that popped up. So I mean this is so actually this uh, so here is where it actually loads the frame. Here it's not displaying an error message. Um, if I deactivate and reactivate, I think it actually will just see. Yeah. So here's here's it actually displays whatever text. Um, that was sometimes because I've been poking around with this, I threw it in an inconsistent state. Um, but yeah, so you can put really any text you want here and it will just show it to you, which is, is really useful. Um, yeah, so that's my first little hack. Um, is that too high level for people with no interest? I can go on different things, trying to get a feel for the experience of the audience. I got one thumbs up, I'll take that as a victory. <laughs> cool, so item number two. I'm, you know what, screw the PowerPoint. Not even this one. So, the next thing you want to do, I'm just going through the order of what you might want to do with the plugin. So the next thing you might want to do is uh, create tables. You know, you can do a lot of cool things with databases. Uh, a plugin that doesn't touch a database uh, is kind of useless. So here's if you want to create your own thing. Um, WordPress has kind of an intro page on this. It's linked over here. Um, but it's, it doesn't explain it too well, in my opinion. Uh, so I kind of dug through it when we did it. Um, you'll note as a random side comment that every function and kind of every Every global thing that I have here is prefixed with the, the plugin name, Boston WP. Um, one thing that you have to be really conscious of with plugins is namespaces. Um, because, they, because PHP operates in one global space, and these are just included in the root, kind of, um, if you name a function called uh, the title, uh, that's going to conflict with another function that PHP has called the title. So there are a number of ways to get around this. One is just to define a class and wrap everything in class. Um, that's useful for larger plugins. I have some that I just maybe four or five different classes for different things. Um, for this particular one, I just decided to prefix all my functions with a name. Uh, then you're not going to run into any issues. You don't have to freak out about anything. It just makes everything easier. So with that being said, um, so here, let's say, you know, you have a lot of situations. When, you release, when you're doing a plugin for yourself, it's easy. You, you go and modify your database. But when you're releasing it to the wild, you might, have to wanna, you might wanna change your database structure. And you run into these, all of these problems that you, that you can uh, encounter when you have a user upgrading from version X to version Y for all of the versions you've ever released. So it's a good idea to kind of build this in from the get-go and have the ability to do this upgrade. You can add it in later, but it's, it's kind of safer to do it this way. Um, so basically, you can, again, I'm, I'm tapping into an activation hook, so when the plugin's activated, I call this function. Um, so this function here, there's, um, you want to store what version your, your plug is currently at. There's no way to track that internally, except in that top little comment that PHP is unaware of. So you want to keep track of what your version currently is. Um, here, I just define the active version, and I can just up that by one whenever I release a new version. Um, so here, you just have all your SQL that you would normally do. And then you start with a simple check. Your simple check is, um, you know, does this table that I want to create currently exist? Um, there are other ways to check this. You could just check the version number, but this is the easiest thing to just say, well, is the table there? Um, if it's not there, if you don't have this table name, then you're going to want to create it. So uh, this is actually specifically recommended how you do it by WordPress. Um, you want to include this arbitrary upgrade file here, and that defines a function called dbdelta. What dbdelta does is it takes, a, it takes an SQL structure, and it'll do one of two things. One, if the table doesn't exist, it will create it. And two, if the table does exist, it will basically do a comparison on the table and build out anything new. So if I have, if this, if I release this and this didn't have the URL field, and someone was on version 0.5 with the URL field, um, and they wanted to, and then I, I'm sorry, without the URL field, and they wanted to, you know, I wanted to add that in later, I can now just make this new SQL, and no matter what version they're on, it'll, it'll, you know, update it appropriately. Um, it's a little finicky. Um, in that, you know, it has some quirks to it, but basically if you ever use PHP MyAdmin, the create table structure there, or if you actually run show create table syntax on your, your SQL database, it'll show, it'll, it'll generate the SQL you can copy and paste in there. So, um, that's a very useful thing to do if you're ever releasing any particularly advanced plugin into the wild. Um, 
So then now, really, I'm going to run that no matter what, as long as I detect that there's some difference. So the other thing you might want to do on a new plugin is insert some test data. Um, so you know that now this is being installed for the first time. It's creating a table, so you throw your test data in there or whatever that may be. Um, and then obviously you want to update the version records so that you don't keep doing that on every update or load or whatever. Um, and then, you know, if your version is different, you just want to do the same things that don't insert the test data. So that's kind of an easy way to, to update uh, tables and maintain them across versions, um, which gets a lot harder when you release something into a library. Uh, anyone have any questions on that? Sweet. Uh, everyone falling asleep? No one care? <laughs> awesome. So I'd like to do it. So, next. So now we get to a really simple one. Uh, this is this is you know, very front facing. This is you want to add an administration. Now, you've never actually written a plugin. You've seen this, you've done it. I'm not going to harp on it too long. Um, so basically, the, the concept here is you want to add a page um, with, ever since WordPress 2.8, I believe, um, this is now broken down into individual categories. There's also something called add sub, sub menu page, add sub page, something like that, um, that is more generic. But this basically, you specify the page name, you specify the permission level, um, which used to be an integer, now there's specific permissions, and there's a list of those on the codex, um, as to what permission you want to have. Um, this, oh, this is basically a key to identify it. So if you have a, um, I'll show you, I'll show you when this comes up. This comes up in the page name, and it's useful to hack into for future things, like linking in between your pages. So it's useful to keep a name of those. Normally I would use the same thing as a function, just for simplicity, but, so, and then this is just your call. Um, so once you add that, if you go to the plugin, I have made this thing called my page, and you'll see over here is the actual, um, uh, is the actual name that I identified there. So the base structure that you kind of want that you want to do with um, new versions of WordPress is just this wrap with an H2. You want to put all content inside the wrap, just if you want to make it look pretty. I know when you're writing something for yourself, you don't care about looking pretty. This will prettify it. So just I did with a wrap. This screen icon is is that icon over there, but the problem is that didn't exist until. Two nine, maybe? I don't know. It's relatively recent. Um, so your two options are you can either define it yourself, just do an if the function doesn't exist, define it somewhere. Um, but that's probably a little sketchy option. The easier thing to do is, well, the better thing to do is just every time you want to call it, check if it exists. This is a general good rule of thumb. Um, on the WordPress codex, uh, with a lot of the functions that say since whatever, if you plan to support older versions, and really you don't have to, but you know you should only, you should support 2.9 right now, and Plus, um, if you want to support older versions, you're going to want to take that into account. Um, it's just something to be very careful of because you're never going to figure out what's wrong. Because someone's going to, you know, install it, it's going to throw an error, they're going to freak out, and trying to get debug information from users who have no idea what's going on is the most painful thing ever. So, make sense? Clear? Questions? Comments? Concerns? What's up? If you take that approach, isn't that kind of be depending upon where you do that in your code? Couldn't that be? Performance what the function exists check? I mean, it, that or or any time if, if you're going to use that technique of just every time you have a question you check something as opposed to keeping a uh, record of checking and then keeping a record of it. I mean, yeah, the you know this is this is a relatively quick hack. The, you know, you could create a global write called Boston WP functions that exist and just check them all once on 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 in it. Um, so really. In terms of performance, when you're doing when you're adding administration pages, um, with the exception of large loops and things like that, they're not going to get any volume requests. Um, you have to be much more conscious when something's being included in the main site um, because that's what has the volume. But really, an administration menu should be a happy slash thing, unless well, let me rephrase: it can be a happy slash thing. Nothing should be happy slash, but something. One kind of added to that: if you add this page returns the book and I didn't actually know that. I was doing the other version of EQ scripts where you just specify what you specify. I, I guess it's not in Q, I mean you print scripts. There's a yeah. That no, I know exactly what you're talking about. There's there's a script, so if you want to include scripts in your header, you, you can't do well, I mean you can do it here, but you don't want to. You want to put them in the header, you want to have them include the page flow. Again, if you want to do things the pretty way. Um, so there's there are these two functions, one called print scripts and one's called EQ scripts. 
in Q scripts, I think takes a name. Uh, print scripts will take the apparently the variable and put that in this function will return. So I, that's actually a much better way to do things. That way you don't have to worry about maintaining string names across. It also things. then uh, only loads the script on on this. Well, no, in Q scripts you can specify a page. I'm, I'm very I don't think that in Q script you can. In Q is just um, defining. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. There's a little hook that's associated with the script. Yeah. Kind of Q, yeah. Okay. So there there are two ways to do it. I would recommend your way. So if you want to store that variable, <coughs> keep in mind if something you know, if uh, print scripts or, or whatever you're looking in your future looks for a, a page variable, uh, you want to take a return from that. <coughs> Good point. Thank you. So uh, let's see here. Next example. This is where we get kind of weird. So, so let's say I want to add a new. So, the, you know, the core of WordPress are posts, um, post pages, objects, for lack of a better term. So, uh, as part of your your plugin development, you may at some point want to modify this and expand the functionality of it to include new things. I have done this a disturbingly large amount of time. So here, I want to add this little checkbox. I want to know if my post has cake, or if the cake is alive. Um, yeah, I know. I'm only two years behind. You know, um, so basically, the whole goal here was to add this box. And you see this box is tied in perfectly. I can drag it around places. I can do things like that. So it's really, you know, you can do hacks a lot of different ways. But this kind of gives you the, the best integration here. Um, so since WordPress is kind of supported in 2.8, I think it's definitely supported in 2.9 and definitely in 3.0, there's this thing called meta boxes. Uh, meta boxes are basically all of these boxes. And uh, WordPress itself uses um, uses it internally. That's one of the great things about the WordPress API is that they tie to themselves. Um, so you know they're going to be well supported. You know they're going to work fairly well because WordPress as a whole uses them. Um, so yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of components here to just adding this one little checkbox. Once you have this checkbox, you can turn it into an input, a, you know, select box. You can do you can basically turn this box into a lot of different things. Um, so the the three things that you want to keep in mind are putting the box in there and maintaining, keeping the right value in it, uh, saving the output to, so that you actually you know, have the output to look at later, and then if someone deletes the post. Um, so the, here are the three actions. One is adding the meta box. Um, one is saving the post, and one is, one is deleting the post. So there's this hook called uh, add meta boxes post. Um, you'll see a lot of times in the hooks there'll be the word post. You can usually replace that with page and maybe even link, I don't even know. Um, so if that's something you just kind of want to grab through the code, see if, you know, add meta boxes underscore whatever, and see what's there. Um, but the naming is fairly inconsistent. It's going to be hard to keep track of. So you're going to want to keep in, you're going to want to actually find the place to hook it and make sure it does the right thing. Um, the WordPress code is clean enough that you should be able to read through. It's not gorgeous, but it's good enough. Um, so here's basically the function that's called when the, the post page is ready to add all its meta boxes. So it'll call this, and you want to call add meta box, which is actually it's very similar to add page. Um, you have uh, your arbitrary ID of it. You have your name, and this is a translation string with two underscores. Translations are another talk. Um, here is your callback. Uh, here is the type of object that's being added on. It's kind of redundant with the fact that this is only being called on posts, so you might as well be specific. And this is side or regular, which will specify if it's default in the right or the middle. Um, yeah, so basically then when the page is actually loaded, I, I know it's a little complicated, um, you will have this, this function will be called, which is actually where you want to output your content. So it will take care of the top, it will take care of the bottom, you just need to provide the middle. Um, it doesn't pass in what the post is, though, so if you want to actually fill data in there, now you have to Again, do the only do something you can only really discover by looking at the code, which is that there's this global variable called post that contains all of the post information you're currently working with. So uh, you can pull that through a global. Um, you can get the meta information for some arbitrary variable, which I'm using Boston WP, and then you can do whatever you want with here. Um, so I create just a checkbox with a label for it, and then I do this thing called a nonce value. Who knows what a nonce value is? Who, who doesn't know and actually cares? All of you should. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. This is a surprisingly cool thing. I bet every, for those who don't know what an OS value is, I bet every single one of your code has a vulnerability that I can explain. Um, so let's say, let's say, 
please, list all your websites, go. Um, so let's say you have, uh, you have a form for uh, creating a post, let's say, arbitrarily creating a post. And I want to hack that form. I want to hack that form. I can't log in as someone because they're behind a login, but I might be able to trick the user into doing something. So if I have maliciouswebsite.com and I trick your user into going to maliciouswebsite.com, what's to prevent me from automatically submitting a form on their behalf, which you can definitely do with JavaScript, just not submit parentheses, um, and then basically forcing them to hit that page or loading it in the iframe and basically doing all these things. So can anyone who doesn't know what a nonce is, besides a nonce, think of a good way to get on that? Well, there are a couple, you all see here. Um, that you can check referrers, but not all browsers send referrers and they're kind of inconsistent and people can refresh the page and blah, 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 blah. So referrers aren't good because they're sent by the user. So they can really send whatever they want. So what you do is you make this nonce value, which is basically on every page that the user wants to submit an action, the, on, on every page that could result in an action submit, you create this nonce value, which is basically a hash of a bunch of things specifically uh, the timestamp or something like that and some arbitrary thing identifying uh, what's going on. So it's kind of the similar to the way you would generate a password. It's, it's non-reversible. Um, you, you can't figure out what it's going to generate and it generates something new on every page. So uh, a good thing to do, for example, is a nonce of the current page, the current ID, the timestamp. Actually, timestamp gets into more difficult things. Maybe the IP address the user's coming from. Basically enough so that a, a hacker can't actually submit something without knowing this value, and it's difficult to guess this value. Um, I'll get into that more in a second. So here we have the save action. The save action is fairly simple. Um, if uh, with WordPress 2.8, they basically have it's kind of it's almost a wiki syntax where you have every single page, uh, every single thing you do creates an entirely new post. Um, so if things will auto save, it'll make a new post. If you save and then go ahead and again, it'll create a new post. So this doing auto save is just kind of a check to make sure you're not saving the data that the user doesn't actually want to save. Um, up here is where I'm actually verifying the nonce. Um, this is fairly well documented, create nonce and verify nonce, so just Google it. This page action comes to my next example, I just have to leave it in there, so just pretend you don't see it for now. And then just the simple update. This save and delete actually passing the ID or updating so you can very easily just do the, the save and the, uh, the save or the delete appropriately. So the awesome end result of this is if I edit my post and I save draft, let's say, of my arbitrary new post and I go back to the edit page, there is now cake in this post. So, Wow, I have now implemented a checkbox with way too much complexity. Like I said, the initial overhead of understanding is fairly high, but once you actually get it in there, you can now do everything you would want to do with a regular form, just tied into WordPress. It's already very good enough. Um, so any questions on that on that example? I'm just thinking aloud. So for the nonce, um, if, so if your vulnerability scenario where so the user goes to a separate site, mm -hmm. your malicious site, right? And it can, what the nonce prevents is uh, using JavaScript or something, pinging the, the submit part of the form, right? Yeah. But what's to prevent then the, that same JavaScript or whatever pinging the form and scraping the nonce and then pinging the submit? So that's, this is actually a, I go way too much about this. So there's, um, there is, are you familiar with uh, all the cross-site scripting protections? Basically, browsers don't let you do um, you are you are forbidden from and forbidden I use in quotation marks from accessing a page on a different domain than the one you are currently on. Um, you can do certain weird things, but generally they require the server on the other end to allow you. JSON P being a particular example. Um, so you can basically it's not possible. You can send a user wherever you want, but you can't actually read data from it. Um, and it's okay. that you can it's kind of like that write but not read that makes the internet secure enough barely to function. Yeah. Any other questions? Cool. Moving on. I got two more, but I suspect we'll run out of time for the last one, so I'll just show it to you and then post this online. Uh, so this is example five. So now, if this is kind of useless if it's particularly relevant to a person and they can't actually find out what it is. So let's say we want to add a column here, and this is very not documented. Tell me right now, you, 
nowhere could I find this actually existed. Um, I couldn't move on it. So I wanted to add a column here called Boston WP that actually identifies if there is or if there isn't a, excuse me, for each individual post. So uh, it's short, but it, again, it's a lot of hunting. So there's two, there's two components to this. One is actually the column, and one is actually the content. So, um, so the first thing is you want to hook into where they define the columns. And all of these columns are defined in an array, uh, the key being an identifier for the column and the value being the name of the column. So here, in this particular one, I want to hook into this w, uh, this manage post column. And again, that can be manage pages column or whatever. Um, and that will be called with an array that contains all of the columns for that. And I want to add to this with my particular one. You can rearrange these if you want. Actually, whatever you pass back will be used. So if I wanted to remove the author column, I could actually just write this in here and remove the author column. Uh, all I have to do is unset calls bracket author and pass it back. Um, so I'm right here, I'm just adding Boston WP. I'm not doing anything with really sorting. And then you have the one where manage post custom column. So basically, if there is a column in the iteration through all of this that WordPress does not recognize, um, what it'll do is it'll call out to the action. So it'll call out to this action with the name of it and uh, the ID of the element it's generating for. So it'll allow you a chance to do it. So if you hook into this, first you want to make sure you're actually doing the right name so you don't interfere with any other plugins um, that may be using this functionality. But then you want to just do whatever you want and echo it. So here I'm doing two things. One is I'm determining whether or not there's cake, and I'm actually outputting it. And two is I'm creating this hidden variable, which we'll use in the next in the next example, uh, with just the Boolean, well, the integer value of it for zero or one, whether or not it exists. Um, yeah. So it's it, again, it's something that's completely non-intuitive, but it's fairly simple once you actually dig into it. One thing of note is that the add action function here. Um, takes two additional parameters that most people don't end up using. One is a priority, so you can prioritize it relative to other things. Um, so the de default is 10. For example, if you have a priority run, it will always be run before other things that are hooked in. Um, so it's just kind of a sorting if you need, if the order matters. And the other is the number of parameters it expects to avoid WordPress errors. So if I don't actually care about the ID, if I'm just outputting a word, I would just leave this as the default, which is one, and then it wouldn't even pass this to um, if you pass the wrong number of parameters, PHP gets pissed at you, so you make sure that's right. Um, any questions about that? Is, is it a WordPress CSS class? Yes, it is a WordPress CSS class. WordPress has a huge number of CSS classes. I just kind of look at what's code is currently there. Uh, when you're trying to make something look right in Word, WordPress 3 or something, really, it's all copying something else. If I'm making a new page, I will copy like nobody's business from some other similar page and just modify that one because it's there's no documentation on how to lay things out properly. And it changes from version to version, which actually makes things and conversion just look horrible. Um, so just kind of, it's kind of hack in place and open things well. Um, any questions about that besides? Just for reference, the custom column stuff should is documented now in the codex because, uh, but it's not where you might expect it because it's part of the feature set of uh, custom host types. So it's not, it's not actually designed for, I mean, it's used internally for it, but it's not designed to add more columns to posts or pages. It's like if you roll yeah. your own post type so that you can add columns. So it's actually both. The fact that this action call exists, this action call is useful for it. But basically, WordPress provides this really good mechanism for making tables, more or less, uh, where you define all your columns and you iterate through all your content. And it's a really good, I, I have some quirks with it, but it's good. Um, for you know, creating pages with tables, and it allows you to do a lot of stuff automatically. Uh, that will, for example, fit within the layout, even if WordPress changes this in and out layout, which they love to do so. Um, so yeah, that's a very good point. Um, in custom post types, if you Google that and look on the codex, you'll find some good documentation on that stuff. Thank you. Any other questions? Cool. So the last one, and we burned you out fast. So now, there's one other thing you might want to do that's definitely not documented. If you can find documentation, it's not very impressed. Okay. So this quick edit button here, what if you want to add quick edit functionality? And the answer is you can, but not easily. So I want to be able to do a quick edit on this. I want to be able to do that, update, have it save. Now the cake is alive. I quick edit again, now it's back. Now it, you know, alive. So this is fairly horrible. And this is, this is again, the, the ultimate example of uh, hacking something into place. 
So there's a lot of components here. One is, well, there's a couple of components. One is the quick edit custom box, which again takes two parameters, and it's very similar to what I did over here, which is the uh, post, which is the manage post column. I'm sorry, which is actually the, the manage post custom column. So quick edit custom box basically allows you to create something custom. Um, the problem is it doesn't really let you make something look good. So if you actually inspect this, please let me inspect you. So if you actually inspect this, it has, there are three field sets that are created and closed before you have a chance to do anything to them. There are no hooks into this. There is left, center, and right. Um, luckily they're floated, so you can just kind of stick another right over here. But you can see this cancel button is supposed to be all the way on the left, and like things don't always work so right, so well. So you kind of have to try to hack things into place. Um, again, it's one of those copy of the code and guess and check kind of things. Um, but long, either way, you can get some code into that custom edit box. And this is non-value dependent. Um, so this is non-value dependent. This is basically just creating a box with an ID. So what I do is I set an ID on the box that I can later modify. Um, and keep, and keep in mind the IDs on these columns are the same as your keys, so you can't just name it Boston WP here. Again, name spacing is horrible. Um, and then the name, I actually have to make sure it is identical to the name I use on the actual post edit page, and I'll show you why. I so here's the generic thing. The problem is this doesn't have any value specific information. Um, so what you want to do is you want to create that value specific information. Uh, WordPress has this kind of hook thing that they do where that better. Uh, so WordPress has this function that's called when you click quick edit that does a call out to the server um, and gets a bunch of information and then pulls it back. The actually no, it doesn't even do a call server. I'm sorry, I phrased that wrong. Um, so there is if you actually go into this code over here and you inspect the element, there is somewhere over here a hidden div uh, that I probably can't find. Uh, in line. Oh, here you go. So there's a hidden div here. They kind of cheat and they just throw all the information in a hidden div with classes and they work with it later. So it's in there in kind of raw data form. They should be using JSON. They're not. So be it. Um, so it, the data is in there. But the problem is there's no hook again to put this to add to this at all. So you kind of have to do the same thing, which is again why I created that little hidden div here with a special ID of what the value is. So I wrote this quick little JavaScript. Again, this is just kind of copying the way WordPress does it, just kind of doing it on my own side. Um, so when the when somebody, does anyone, does ever you know jQuery to some extent? Does everyone know what the live function does? The live function, L-I-V-E? So does anyone know what the click function does? The click function adds a click handler. The live function does the exact same thing in that this one will add a click handler, but if you create more rows or edit rows and any of them match this uh, string here, this selector here, it'll automatically add that handler. It is awesome because normally when I would, when I edit this post and I click save, it just kind of kills that line and generates a new one because we don't know what's changed. And that way now I don't have to reattach any of my handlers. It's really, really convenient. So anyway, um, I kind of tapped into it. Um, I figure out the ID number of my post. I pull the text value of that element. I parse it as an integer. Now I basically have a Boolean. Um, and I set this check value that I defined earlier to check or not check. Does that, is that confusing? Did I go too fast on that? It's, like I said, it's, it's a perfect example of you know, things WordPress doesn't yet allow you to do, but you can do it. Anyway. So you set that value. Then, luckily, you don't really have to do anything else for saving. Because when you click save here, uh, I'm actually not used to Chrome yet, even though I'm trying my best to use it. When you click update here, ah, it doesn't give me a net list. Anyway, when you click update, take my word for it, it takes that entire form and every value in it, it'll serialize and basically save the post. There is no specific hook that you can tie into for that particular save post as opposed to a generic save post. So that's why you want to make sure that this post, that this name has the same name as the uh, edit field on the actual page itself, because that's actually going to be added over here via the via the save column. Uh, so it's the same call, so you want to make sure it's the same post value. The 
the one thing here is. Um, Absolutely. So there's no specific way to tie into the save on quick edit action as opposed to the save on regular edit action. So the only way to really take care of that is to use this generic hook and make sure it works for both of them, which is why you want to make sure your names of your input fields are identical. So assuming you've done that, uh, you also don't have your nonce value. I don't know if the Ajax thing has a nonce value, but if it does, it will be automatically handled by WordPress and you haven't put in this custom nonce value. So you can kind of just treat it as voodoo magic and say, well, if it's an inline save, you don't need to care. Um, because WordPress handles the, the, authentic, the verification on this. Uh, and then just do your standard save and voila. Again, not a lot of code, but one of those things that you have to dig into code, to, that you have to dig into existing code to see. So. Can you um, edit the code or do this for a custom mode that you're looking at strong? Absolutely. Um, the quick edit, you're going to have to write a lot more JavaScript because the JavaScript for the, like I said, this this line here that fills, this JavaScript here that fills in the post is custom written for, for post pages and other things. I actually have a plugin called Custom Taxonomies where it does that exact thing. I implement a quick post. Um, like I said, it's hacky and you have to write a lot of custom JavaScript for it, but you can copy the existing JavaScript and just leave a lot of things. So it's not miserable. Um, What's, up? What's the advantage to using PHP to print out the custom boxes but to using JavaScript? Because then you could put it in the right field set. You know? Oh, the custom box? Yeah. Um, nothing in particular other than the potential for a moment of lag. Um, really, I don't think you're going to see that, especially not in Chrome. Um, but yeah, this was just kind of, like I said, the way I do most of my things, I see how WordPress does it and I tie into it. Um, they specifically did give this, this hook for the intent of people adding things in here, so I figured I might as well use it. I suspect in the future, um, no, I don't. I hope in the future that WordPress will actually add good functionality for this and make it easily doable. Um, a lot of things need to happen first, like the quick post format needs to turn to J uh, JSON so that they can actually have people add it, um, add to it instead of that stupid div undo thing that they did um, with the hidden info. So I can see it coming in the distant future. I feel like it's not very high on their plate because I don't know how many people are asking for it besides me. <laughs> so. So yeah, that pretty much does it. Like I said, uh, I'm not sure how many of you will actually get to use it, but uh, hopefully these are some interesting things that you may have a chance to, to poke around with. What's up? Why did the terminal say Ubuntu? Oh, because I- Pretty much at the beginning of the, the presentation. Oh, so actually, this is, oh, this is my server. Um, oh, why? Yeah, I, I remote into a server to do everything because I'm used to being on a Windows machine and not wanting to do anything cool on so a Windows machine. Um, also, cloud is awesome. So, so yeah, um, it's funny because I was using VPS link and they just started sucking because they got bought by someone. So, what, three days ago, I just switched over to a new host. It got very easy nowadays. So you're actually live on your server? What? You're live on your server the terminal? This is, this is uh, a specific directory that exists solely so that you guys can see it. I, I don't have anything here but the client installed. So it's basically, this is actually, if I were doing development on my, my blog, I would just make like slash dev or slash dev2, I would do a WordPress install, maybe feed off the same database if I, I, if I know I'm not doing anything that may modify database data, um, but even that's questionable, and then I would do my modification. Um, it's easy to do on a server because you know you know you have the exact same copy. I can actually just make a directory and then just cp-r and copy in all the files right away. Um, so that's my, my preferred method for doing and then also my, you know, my subversion repository is on the server. So when I want to do subversion edits, it's just a file colon slash slash that I'm building, um, which you need to either rest the stage and copy. Anywho, <laughs> I digress. Um, any other questions? Comments? Who do you switch to? Um, I switched to Slicehost. Slicehost? Yeah, Slicehost. Um, they're a little more expensive than I, than I would have liked, but they have great reviews. Um, and my funding program is. So, I like them. Uh, any other questions, comments, things you want me to ramble about? I know a lot of stupid things. Um, some smart things, but not a lot of them. What's up? Where can we find the code later? Um, I'll, I'll, post it on, um, I'll post it on my blog, and then I'll send you a link and you email it out. Cool. I'll do that tomorrow. I'll be making it tomorrow night. Thanks for clarifying the names of Oh, no problem at all. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I look, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a 
trailing scale with you have all of the obscure features that WordPress has that aren't well documented, and then they slowly become more documented. But as they become more documented, you have more obscure features that people want to use that aren't documented. So you, you always have this kind of curve of you know undocumented things, but they slowly do eventually move up and become pretty well documented. Um, I'd like to see more community in, in the WordPress world because they're not really great with that. But so. um, I, I've recently been like working through the the source code like, on, on, uh, on that board, and uh, I was wondering what you like what file you would suggest uh, for like the get and all the things you want to know like like what what has like a lot of like things that you. Uh, um, it depends entirely on what you're looking to do. So I, one of the ones that when developing this came in handy were um, wqcon admin includes template. Um, again, it, this is this is because this has all the inline editing code and the HTML for that. Um, really, there's so there's two places that have relevant things. There's wp admin which has all of the admin panel stuff, barring some database interactions that are done more generically. And then there's WP and includes. Really, I, I would just, for whatever you're looking to work with, I, I work entirely off example. I just don't just read code, because that's just not how I learn. Um, but you know, if I'm looking to figure out manage post columns, I would just go grep-r manage uh, column, I forgot what this is called. And there you go. Now you now you know what the what the functions are. You know where to look for them. Uh, so I think actually it's manage post. Yeah. So here you have your do action manage post custom columns. So if you're looking for something in particular, I would start with something you interact with. Figure out where the do action call is, which is actually would be the opposite of add action, um, and just trace through that and figure out what it's doing on its end. Because you already have some basis and knowledge of what it's doing, and you can kind of trace back and figure out. What goes on the higher level? Yeah. 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 Cool. cool. Any other questions, comments, concerns, insults, <laughs> whatever, whatever floats your boat? What's up? Any thoughts on the stuff you've run into, run into so far on 3.0 versus 2.0? I haven't had a lot of time to dig into 3.0. I know some things that I hate with 2.9 that I would bet money aren't fixed. Um, <laughs> the, so back way back when in WordPress 2.0, Seven, maybe even earlier. Um, the only way to do per to do permalinks, which is the URL redirect structure, is with a .ht access file. Uh, does everyone know what .ht access file is? Yeah. So you um, so you would say what you wanted to do. It would generate a .ht access file, and you copy it all into into something. Uh, WordPress since then switched into, and this is one of those features that again not well documented, but as time goes on, will be these. It's only you know 0.3 versions old. Um, they they had this thing where you just put this generic .ht access file, which says if this file doesn't actually exist, then just send people to index with the information we'll figure out a code side. Um, which is really nice because it gives you some really interesting options for your code structure, but modifying it is a huge, huge thing. Um, if you want to add, like I said, I wrote a custom taxonomy plugin, I want to tie it into permalinks, and that was the one place where I had a huge amount of trouble not modifying code. I found bugs and I found weird things, mostly not bugs in the core functionality because it works, but bugs in the way the action hooks work versus how they're supposed to work and the custom taxonomy handling. I feel like it, it is getting slightly better and will get a lot better because there's so much focus on custom taxonomies now and custom types and things like that. But that was something I distinctly found lacking and was was notably, notably painful to do code to find. Yeah. Other than that, WordPress is becoming a very solid thing. I like it. That's why I talk about it. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, concerns? Uh, if anyone is a PHP developer and is looking for a job, you can have my job. I am <laughs> leaving my, I'm not even joking, I'm going to recruit for my employer until I open a Boston office with my son. Um, they, uh, I work for TripAdvisor, um, I work on the Flights product, it is a huge amount of JavaScript, it is an awesome product. Uh, I'm not going to do a plug because that seems too cheap. Do my yeah. um, <laughs> so, but it's, it's, it's a really great place to work, it's a very startup environment, they pay pretty well. Um, so if you're looking, if you have PHP experience, even if you don't have job experience, we're hiring, uh, talk to me. Uh, and again, if you have usability study experience, I want to talk to you and offer you a free product. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Cool. Yes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>